Laz, thanks for taking the time. I'm John MacArthur. This is Hi. Callie Lewis. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet I, you. I appreciate you coming in. Is, I think this is your first time on the cube. Is, Absolutely. Okay. All oh, right. Oh, you nervous? Okay. Not really. Okay. Good. I didn't well, think so. well, you, you, you can make look. me nervous by asking the wrong things, but no. Right. Okay. No, I'm, actually, I'm going to be very careful and ask you not to disclose anything that you shouldn't, so we can sure. have you back again. Yes. Sure. But I do understand that you gave, a, uh, you helped allay in some concerns among customers that uh, regarding um, an investment roadmap on the Equalogic platform and, sure. and things like that. Can you just talk a little bit about that? First, can you start with what were some of the concerns? Well, so actually, you know what? Start one place first. Tell everybody who you are. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. There you, go. We, you know, I you know we were just so excited to have him on. I know. That we just went straight because into because it. I I've known I, I've known and followed you for a long time. No, you don't know me, but I know you. It's one of those things. Sure. A little. Uh, so so uh, let, me, let me give you a little bit of background. Give some background. Uh, I, I actually was uh, one of the uh, the four or five architects that actually built the original Equalogic product. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I joined Equalogic in early 2002. Right. Uh, I'm mostly known for the guy, they, they keep calling me the GUI guy, but I, I, I run the software development teams that own uh, all of the control plane. Everything that controls the, um, the security, the, the, the automation of the features in the array that everyone's you know, mm -hmm. known to grow and love. Uh, and then uh, pretty much all the software development that goes on in the various uh, host integration activities. So anything that goes on Windows, in VMware ZSX, in, uh, on Linux as well, uh, and uh, pretty much any other um, you know, ecosystem related uh, software development. So it's actually a relatively large group now. When I started, uh, I was me and two guys. Okay. And uh, now we're uh, about a hundred people or so. Okay. And, and you hold a few patents uh, here, yes. right? Yes. Um, yeah, we've discovered a few interesting ways of doing things over yeah. the last ten years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, so things around snapshot technology, uh, our multipathing is also another uh, area where we have some uh, intellectual property that's very unique. Uh, and uh, there's there's a few other things ongoing uh, right now, and, and actually the, the interesting things about patents is that um, they're public, so I can talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, uh, we we have some uh, uh, some automation capability that uh, we think is unique uh, around uh, auto logins of uh, of iSCSI initiators. Uh, and uh, there's uh, a number of other areas uh, that uh, I can probably too numerous to mention. I'll yeah. bore you with it. But but anyway, a lot of but, lot but of good stuff of, there. But but relative yeah. to Dell being a ha having a lot of IP now, you, say, sure. you know that you're you're bringing in a fair bit of IP from the Ecologic side. Is the point? Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and uh, this, by the way, is Dave Vellante. Hi, Lazarus, how are you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. So, uh, so you, are you from New Hampshire? I actually live in Boston. Oh, you do? I yeah. grew up in Boston. You like How about those Bruins? It <laughs> <laughs> was awesome last night, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's, we got, it's a series again. Uh, as uh, Cedric Maxwell, Se Maxwell would say, that's the big needle in the arm. We're back in this thing. And, uh, well, you know, so, growing up, I just wasn't, I, 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 you know, the season would be over by now. Uh, right. You know, so, so hockey in June is still something that I haven't mentally really grasped. But, uh, but yeah, Well, you're younger than I am, so <laughs> 1972, I remember. Of course, it wasn't June back then. It was a little earlier, but, uh, you know, they stretch out the season. So, so what did you do? You commuted to, to New Hampshire every day? Or? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so, and, uh, so, so take us back to the. I mean, how did how did this collection of people, you know, end up in New Hampshire and in, in this renaissance of storage? We were talking to Phil Soren earlier about, you know, you had companies like Equalogic and Left Hand and, and Compellent and Three Par and Data Domain. It was like this storage hotbed coming out of the dot com bust. Sure. You know, and, and you can understand Silicon Valley, right? That makes sense. But how yeah. did it how did it happen that you know it was Minnesota, right? And, New Hampshire? How'd that happen? Well, well. So uh, there's there's a couple of interesting uh, technology areas uh, in in New England, and uh, I came from the networking industry. Uh, as it turns out, uh, if if you recall, in the late '90s, there were a lot of networking companies that came out of uh, the the Route 495. Yeah, yeah. Banyan Systems. And I worked at Banyan. Yeah. Systems. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that was actually my. Uh, okay. my I thought it would be my favorite job ever, and then yeah. I, I uh, something uh, happened. Yeah. And well, <laughs> yeah, Microsoft happened actually, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, lots of storied companies that were networking related there, uh, and uh, the dot com bust. People forget, you know, people keep thinking of Pets.com, 
uh, the the networking vendors were the the real money makers during yeah. the, the late nineties. Yeah, uh, there, there was the bandwidth craze, and exactly, and that was the area that was substantially overbuilt. So when when the the, the boom busted, uh, there were a lot of us networking geeks out of work. You know what's so, ironic about that is the the story, and you remember this back then, was that during the gold rush. The people who made all the money, they, it wasn't the people who mined the gold, it was the people that provided the infrastructure exactly. to mine the gold. And so that's why the networking business you know, exploded. It was like, oh, it's going to be the same thing. And exactly. Well, so yeah. I, I was at a networking startup, and uh, it, it went out of business, as it turned out, maybe uh, two months before uh, I joined Equalogic. And uh, you know, I got a cold call from Paula Long at that point. Oh, you and did? She, okay. And, and she was looking for people that understood uh, you know, the control planes and system management. Uh, did you know Paula before? I had never met her before okay. in my life. And, uh, and, and famously, you, you, you could check with my wife on this, I had told her uh, after uh, Innovate Networks closed that I would never join a startup again and I never wanted to be a people manager again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Never say <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, two months later, I'm showing up at Equalogic uh, working for Paula. And Paula had, uh, you know, this, this uh, interesting way of you know, collecting people. She would spin you. She would un listen to what you were saying. Uh, and somehow uh, you would leave the room thinking you're going to go to Equalogic and it was your idea to begin with. <laughs> and it, <laughs> so it, was, it was very, very, very strange. And so I you know, learned a lot about management from that, that approach. Uh, and so, um, you know, she actually took uh, a few people from the networking space. Okay. Um, there are obviously some uh, relatively large, actually very large storage companies in uh, in New England. Uh, I've heard of some. Yeah. Strangely enough, we did not really hire a lot of people that had storage backgrounds. Uh, there were some people... Um, That's why it's the product is so simple. <laughs> 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 we have, uh, it, it will clearly the, the lower level... Uh, you know, RAID code and uh, and the storage stack uh, did come from very very experienced. Actually, it was uh, people that, that worked at Adaptec. Uh, right. She, she yeah, got people no, there. Was a, there. there was a big Adaptec community in Nashua prior, exactly. prior it, to the start of Equalogic. It turns out that we um, we got the building, Adaptec I also. actually visited it when it was Adaptec. Right? <laughs> I didn't know that, John. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adaptec uh, had, had a whole... Uh, was that Grant, RAID, Grant who uh, set that up? Uh, the RAID controller uh, uh, development yes, was yes, done up exactly. there. Exactly, and, and yeah. the very same people. So, uh, <laughs> so they actually closed that office yeah. and, and leased that building to Equalogic yeah. uh, at some ridiculous per square, square foot rate, including all the furniture. Right. And, uh, and so there's a select few people that went to work for a new company in their old cubicle. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> It was, a, it was a very uh, interesting... If Adaptic had been really smart, they would have leased you the building and the people and then and never laid them off. And then and then they could have had a piece of a nice exit as opposed to being sold for uh, uh, pennies on the dollar. Yeah. 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 So... <laughs> So, <laughs> so Oops. Um, Oops. You know, moving on. So moving on from that, uh, you know, the, we we actually always had this this focus on on simplicity. Yeah. Uh, and because none of us were jaundiced from having worked at storage companies, we were always looking at these workflows that you know configuring a SAN, you know, all the the crazy things you need to do in a in a fiber channel SAN at the time. It was. It was. It would drive us nuts. We, yeah. we'd, ha we'd have to sit there and, and scratch our heads and say, "Well, why is it this way?" And and you know, it, you know, iSCSI is simple, and we were all you know networking people, right. and so the, a lot of the the provisioning model that you have in the arrays today came out of those discussions. What about on the monitoring side too? Though? You got provisioning and you got monitoring, and monitoring is a big part of networks, right? Exactly, and you'll notice that. Uh, so our, our array uh, from the very beginning, and, and this, is, this is my fault, obviously. I I, 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 I have put an SNMP agent in the box, uh, so the, the array is actually monitored like a network device uh, because it's it's an IP device, and uh, even even today you have a, a really wonderful tool that we give away for free to our customers. Or San HQ, it's an SNMP monitoring tool, uh, okay. and, and it's the kind of thing that if you had a switch or a router, you'd be used to having. But right. you know, for some reason in, in the storage world, this is not there. You know, you, you have all sorts of arcane ways of getting this type of data. So, so, but coming from a networking side, were there any surprises for you when you got into storage? It's like, gosh, I wish I'd known that. You know, or was it really? Or did the storage world actually overcomplicate everything and it really is that easy? 
No, no, no. no. I don't okay. think that I don't think that they overcomplicated things okay. at all. I think that no one had, um, you know, people people build up sort of a frame of mind or a frame of reference about uh, how they're going to use a product and. Uh, you know, putting together a, a RAID set and, uh, you know, and deciding what kind of a RAID type you're going to have. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, of workflows, and then they make a lot of sense when you have a very, very specific application in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, know, you had this big, long decision tree, and it seemed overcomplicated. Uh, you know, when, when we finally shipped the product, I started to realize as I got feedback from customers that, well, there is a reason they do that. They want a, a RAID 50 or a RAID right. 5. They're or, looking for a certain yeah. performance characteristics yes, exactly. for certain kinds of applications, things like that. Exactly, yeah. and uh, and that was sort of the, uh, the 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 point at which we stepped back and said, well, wait, you know, maybe we do need a few more knobs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, overall, uh, the philosophy always was that we're going to try and make as many of these decisions for our customers as possible uh, in the code. So so Darren, Darren Thomas often uh, calls us the apple of, of storage arrays because we, we, the first thing we did is we took all the knobs out. Do you ship without a user manual? Uh, no, we do ship oh, with a oh, user yeah, manual. Okay. Um, so you're not uh, quite to Apple How thick is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it on 11 <laughs> by 7? <17? laughs> how much does it weigh? <laughs> well, well, the 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 litmus test, I'll tell you, the litmus yeah. test always was that uh, no one who actually tried to test the product, we beta test without a user manual. Yeah. Uh, no one who actually sees the product for the first time, uh, any release, uh, has a user manual, and we watch them closely. Okay. And if they get confused, that's that's where you have to write. We're we're well, no, actually, it's cause for alarm, and okay. and usually it becomes my problem. So that's where you have to code. Then. Exactly. Okay. So we write code to 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 make it simpler, make things more obvious, or automate steps. Okay. A and that's that's always been the the philosophy for us. Is I remember when I when I was at uh, when I was at university, a lot of people put down sidewalks based upon you know what seems to make sense to them. This, the university I went to put down the sidewalks after the students beat the paths to the yeah. doors. <laughs> so they saved a lot of they saved a lot of concrete. I think that's a good analogy. <laughs> students are walking. Over, Where's the bloody sidewalks? Yeah. <laughs> They'll show up. <laughs> Just wait to see where yeah. they're going to walk. <laughs> Find the pattern. Yeah, so um, when when Dow was doing all this back and forth with HP and three par, what were you guys thinking? Were you just so sitting oh, back yeah. on? You know, well, the, oh. You know, it, we were amused. We, we knew the three-par guys, uh, and actually, um, uh, Mr. Farley. Uh, you, know, you would know uh, Mark a bit, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Mark was actually our blogger at Equalogic and at the time of at, yeah, the, at the time of the, the Dell acquisition of Equalogic. Yes. And then he moved on to three-par. Three right. And uh, I thought it was the funniest thing. Uh, and you know. The, you know, the, you know hey. So so I, I emailed him and I said, "Well, welcome back." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that was premature. Uh, but so you guys were kind of like, I mean, in that same you, you know, equal logic, left hand compellent, three par, sort of in that same class, sure. if you but, will, yeah, superstars. But 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 taking different majors. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Did <laughs> you? To, to, you must have. Did you? Did you watch each other, or were you more like, all right, we know what the target is. It's that big gorilla in Hopkinton. It, it really was, and, and if you look at the storage market, there's just so many different layers of, of uh, sub-markets, and uh, we were always focused on the lower to mid section of that market, yep. uh, and 3PAR was, you know, was from mid to high. And uh, you know, the compellent also was, it was actually probably more, more overlap between us and compellent, uh, but but they were they were more or less in the same uh, ballpark as us. Uh, but um, you know, we 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 were always watching each other, and we were always looking at you know what feature does three par have, and what feature does compellent have. Yeah. And if you look at the feature roadmaps for all these companies who introduced what, you'll see Equalogic introduce a whole bunch of things first, you'll see uh, Compellent introduce a whole bunch of things first, yep. but immediately after the introduction of, of an Equalogic feature, Compellent would announce, uh. and then, um, you know, vice versa, and so, you know, there, there was definitely uh, a, a kind of a, a sibling-friendly rivalry. It's amazing, isn't it, that innovation occurs that way? You're on, you know, different parts of the country, in the case of three part, different coasts, Sure. and and yet you, you come up with similar concepts applied differently maybe applied to different markets, but sure. uh, 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's what you see in well, our industry. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if absolutely. somebody thinks of it, somebody else is thinking of it at the exact same time and maybe thinking about applying it differently. You know? Well, what happens frequently is that, uh, you know, I, th I think it's those sales guys that do this, right? They, they, uh, they go around and they talk about uh, a particular product to a customer and, and maybe the three-part product was not all that great for customer A, but... Uh, Gee, that then provisioning stuff seems really good. Right, right. And then uh, you know, Equalogic comes in afterwards, and uh, you know, they they uh, they start yelling at us because we don't have thin provisioning. And then <laughs> guess what? <laughs> so, so so that's how the the cross pollination. Occurs. So you're watching three par, and there was a big gap, and then that that fell apart, and then all of a sudden, compellent comes into the mix. As you said, there was much more overlap there. Was it like, okay, all right, well, wait a minute, you know, what, what, how's that working internally, and what are you guys, you know, how how are you? Or are you even worried about it? I mean, you're trying to reconcile that, or is it more just like, hey, let's just sort of see what happens in the marketplace? Or are you being more deliberate, I guess? Well, the well, the first thing, uh, we've, we've met with the, the compellent guys from the early, very early stages of, of that deal. I, I think, um, you know, we are very friendly with them. Uh, we actually like them a lot. They're very smart guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in some areas, they solved problems very similarly to to Equalogic, right. mm -hmm. in other areas, um, you know, we're, we're vastly different, uh, but we're not really that worried about it. Uh, we're, we're spending a lot of time thinking about ways in which we can leverage each other's work, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the uh, sort of truisms of, of integrating companies is that it takes a long time, right. and you. you they, they've been building stuff around their system for you know, 10 years almost, and we have uh, a, a long history right. as well, and you can't simply pull parts of systems together um, by ripping code and compiling it again. It, it, it actually has to be uh, well thought out. I mean, but sometimes I wonder about the ROI of integration. I mean, everybody wants integration, but except it's hard. It's hard. I mean, sometimes it's better maybe just to leave things alone. I mean, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that that's actually a... a very very good question and uh, I have a uh, you know I'm very opinionated on that I think I think uh, integration for integration's sake doesn't necessarily solve any problems it creates more problems for the vendors right uh, you know and at some point we're, we're competing in different markets mm -hmm. and uh, the requirements of one set of customers uh, should dictate uh, what that product what the product they use looks like. Um, so having uniformity and complete integration uh, is not always desirable. Uh, and it's hard, so you end up, you know, in some cases, you could easily uh, end up building something uh, that's very hard to build uh, and not really derive much benefit. So you have to be very surgical about where you integrate. So what are the big differences? Is it channel? Is it uh, use case? Is it capability? Um, because you're both simple products. I mean, talked to both customer bases, like, oh, so simple. Like, one Ecologic customer this week said, I got my weekends back. You know, another, <laughs> the guys at Mazda were saying, you know, how simple, you know, Compellent made their lives. So you sure. see a lot of the same themes. So there's some similarities there. What are the differences? Well, uh, you know, Compellent uh, obviously is a, uh, is a much bigger system in terms of, uh, in, in terms of, Scale, Total, yeah, scale, yeah. right? Um, we are more focused uh, in um, storage as um, small increments. So what you'll find uh, throughout our history is that our, our key customers were the guys that were buying their first sand. Uh, they had, uh, you know, seen the light and they, they really realized that you know this the shared storage thing is something we need to do. Um, Probably because of VMware uh, more than right. anything else. Uh, VMware, as you know, has kind of driven the whole SAN market uh, right. over the last few years, and we have always been there as the you know the the most um, expedient and lowest cost and easy to use solution uh, for that constituency of customers. Uh, and Compellent, uh, and this is, you know, I don't have hard data on this, but Compellent uh, seems to have much more traction uh, in more established shops where they've had, uh, they've, they've had shared storage for a while. Yeah. So, uh, difference in, in approaches from, uh, from a market standpoint. Mm -hmm. So the, the, they really are different. You wouldn't buy Compellent if it was you know, your first uh, experience with SANS more, more or less. I mean, I'm sure they can you know, specify a system yeah, that might be your years, but, yeah. 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 But, uh, but that, that's the way it's been positioned uh, you know, for the most part. And 
you know, we really didn't see a lot of compellent out in the uh, in the field uh, when we were pitching. You didn't, yeah. you didn't compete against yeah. them. Yeah, you, from time to yeah. time, you'd always compete yeah. against uh, people. The, the, well, the big boys were the ones we were constantly competing right, against. Sure. And, and, and one of the things, one of the things that I heard uh, during the conference is, if there's no overlap, there's gaps. So, so <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know, you, it's okay to have a little bit of overlap. Sure. Well, sure. Uh, I, I, this is not the only company that's uh, that's experiencing a little bit of that, right? I mean, sure. You, you, you see, you even see some of that in EMC, but they try to manage it through marketing and through sales and through channel and things like that. But you know, there are workloads that a Clarion does that a Symmetrics could do, or, or vice versa. And, exactly, so. and, and you have to have an informed, uh, you know, process for, for how to select the product, especially if right. you have multiple choices. It's, it's all about the customer. Right. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I think uh, as we go forward, you know, the, the, the main points of integration between the products are probably going to be in the area of migration. Because of, you know the data, 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 data migration yeah, so across you, systems or within systems or uh, across systems probably as, as yeah. a start yeah. uh, it would be very nice. Uh, I know a lot of customers have approached me this week saying it would be very nice to be able to use uh, one or another system uh, to hold replication data. Either you want to a replicate target, from yeah. one to the other, yeah. uh, and uh, you know that fair enough. That's actually a, a good use case, and, and mm. we're definitely going to be looking at things like so that. So, for example, I might uh, I might not want to have a, a target a remote target be the same. Exactly. Maybe, maybe I got a, maybe I got a compellent in my, my my data center. I might want to have a remote target that's an equal logic. Exactly. Right? It's simpler, lower cost, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I may have some really smart people in my data center, but maybe I don't have IT staff in a, in a remote office. I need something that that uh, I can just sort of leave there with the lights off in a closet. I, I, you know, that 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 might be a, a possible. So, Lazarus, you came from a, a networking background. How do, how do you like the storage business? You know, it's uh, well. The networking, the networking business was very exciting in the '90s, yeah. uh, and uh, you know that 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 all seems to have gone away uh, now that uh, you know it's quiesced to be really one large company, and the storage business is actually uh, as exciting as the networking business was in the Because you don't 90s. have, I mean, EMC is the largest vendor. I think it's got I don't know 30 percent share or something. Why do you think it was that Cisco was able to to capture? I don't know, whatever, 70% share of the marketplace, and that never happened in storage. What's your observation there for somebody who's been in both worlds? Well, the the first uh, the first thing that we should point out was that uh, Cisco picked up a lot of their market share uh, as a result of that dot-com bust. Uh, remember, a lot of the infrastructure vendors are ve were very, very, very extended at the time. And you'll recall, who were the competitors? Nortel, where are they now? I mean, you you you, uh, you never actually had that happen in the storage industry, where all the competitors just folded uh, and were in such bad shape that they didn't they weren't even able to compete. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, almost. I mean, I mean <laughs> they never folded, but EMC and NetApp came out of the dot com. They they were they were in trouble, but they but they rebounded. They were in yeah, a little they, bit better shape. They were they were in better shape, and yeah. so they they continued they to held on. And, to hold on, uh, you know, you had a lot of. You know, I mentioned Nortel. Uh, do you remember Cabletron Systems? Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, there, there, yeah. There, there, there were a lot of uh, three com, uh, three yeah. com, kind of. Three com, I mean, three com. Uh, three com was going to get into the storage networking business there for a while. I had a whole. I remember, I remember a, a couple of guys that uh, that I used to interact with that were trying to grow the the uh, storage business, a uh, storage business at three com. Uh, it, it, it didn't really take off, but you know, exactly. so. they're in the storage business now. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly <laughs> no, no, right. It's, it's true, and and the uh, and of course, there's lots of rumors around networking here at, at, at Dell. So, and I won't, uh, you know, I don't, how far well, we're going to go. Well, I was going to be. Those. No, I, I, <laughs> and so I don't. Oh, those, we we wrote about that, right? Yeah. I mean, we, that, that's just you know, we're on record as saying this makes no sense. But um, uh, and you're in the networking business today. Dell has you know, yeah, internet yeah, networking. Well, oh, oh yes, and, and actually, you know, uh, this is one of the more interesting things that um, I, I think gets lost on people, you know, iSCSI is probably the uh, the biggest driver for high performance networking here yeah. out there right now. I mean, e most networking vendors really love applications that demand a lot of networks because, you know, that y it requires you to buy the best gear. Right. Uh, yeah. iSCSI is one of those applications. Yeah. Uh, and, so and you're so definitely driving some uh, network demands here. So. Uh, I'm going to slide out and let you let you uh, continue for a little bit. I've got to run to a.
to another uh, quick appointment, Laz. It was great to spend yes. some time with you. Same here. All right. Cool. So uh, let me just uh, tell you out there, we're uh, we're live here at the Dell Storage Forum. This is day three for us. This is Silicon Angle and SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum. And uh, Silicon Angle is the worldwide leader in tech coverage. This is the Cube. How do you like the Cube, Lazarus? Oh, well, it's my first time in the Cube. Yeah. I'm, so well, I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you invited me. This well, is fun. It's, it's just, it is fun. We're you know the Cube is a place where we try to find the smartest nodes, extract knowledge, and, and learn and share with our audience. And uh, and uh, so we appreciate you coming on here. Um, what's what's the future hold? You know, if you if you look out and you know put on your telescope, what do you see happening in in storage? You saw. Let's sort of take people through. You saw the sort of the old mainframe days seeded to the sort of open system, big box, monolithic days, then SAN came in. Mm -hmm. And SAN kind of, kind of, it did some great things, but it really didn't deliver on the promise of simplifying, you know, mm -hmm. storage. Sure. It, 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 it definitely helped with, with disaster recovery, you sure. know, it helped with sharing. Um, but it certainly didn't help with simplifying. And that's where you guys came in and, that's and right. some of your, your, your peers. Um, What's next? What's the next wave in storage, do you think? Well, there, there are, are a lot of interesting developments. Uh, so, uh, first of all, the, the big driver uh, in, uh, in, in storage right now is virtualization. Uh, so, anything related to uh, enabling better virtualization is, is uh, interesting fodder. So, you mean For server virtualization or server storage virtual virtualization? Well, okay. well yeah. so, as I mentioned before, uh, server virtualization, uh, VMware, uh, Hyper-V, those types of solutions mm -hmm. are actually drivers for SAN storage. Uh, the, the, the way you make those things work, the way you achieve the level of, of availability that you desire is through shared storage. Uh, and it's, it's causing our customers to go out and, and implement things that, you know, 10 years ago they wouldn't have considered to implementing clusters. For example, uh, you've been around a while yeah. too. I mean, clusters in the 90s were this, you know, crazy thing that, you know. Yeah. Supercomputers you know, exactly. and clusters. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, now it's it's relatively commonplace. It's taken a while, but if you look at when the, uh, the pickup occurred, it was virtualization. Now, going forward, uh, you know, in, in the virtualization area, you, you have a whole bunch of other performance bottlenecks, and uh, in, in order to alleviate those, uh, you're going to see the, the next generation of, of innovation. Uh, one of the big things is uh, SSD and flash. Uh, it, 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 it is kind of a game changer, if you think about it. Uh, we've built a huge amount of infrastructure around uh, you know, managing rotating rust, and at this point, uh, you know, something like that technology really makes the infrastructure uh, well kind of creaky. Uh, what are we going to do about uh, having something that behaves almost like memory? Uh, you know, the everything, everything, all the code that we wrote uh, needs to be rethought, uh, and there's a whole new set of paradigms. We're not going to use Flash like we do disks, uh, and so there are all sorts of use cases for Flash uh, in areas, uh, especially in virtualization, where you have really, you know, hot data uh, or or data sets that are incredibly concentrated in in some way. Uh, we actually have an array right now in uh, the Equalogic array, the uh, XVS array. That's um, half SSD, half rotating media, and uh, that. That is actually a, a, a wonderful product for virtualization, uh, but there's a lot more we could be doing there. Uh, so, so, in terms of optimizing the flow and, sure, and performance sure. and cost. Exactly. So you mentioned several virtualization, uh, clustering, SSD and flash. This thing, this notion of hybrid arrays. Um, can we throw in desktop virtualization as well? Is that that's something you've uh, seen that's a before? Very, very big uh, uh, area and. Uh, you know the 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 key driver for that is is, is you know economics, and uh, as an industry, we're going to be challenged to come up with ways to make the the economics of desktop virtualization work. Uh, and when you when you look at the cost of a desktop, uh, it's it's actually pretty cheap, mm -hmm. uh, it's cheap hardware. Uh, there's there's real management cost in, in managing that stuff and uh, by centralizing it there's there's some leverage to be gained but you still have to to, to obviate all the, the costs that are inherent in having all this 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 big infrastructure to manage uh, desktop virtualization so things uh, a lot of these technologies that we were talking about help 
but uh, it, you know, we want to get to the point where a virtual desktop costs less than a physical one. And we're getting there. I've been talking uh, this week, we were at Citrix Synergy a couple weeks ago, and, sure. and what struck me there is that the whole notion of desktop virtualization, even though everybody uses that term, seems to be outdated. It's a very kind of 20, sure. 20th century concept, and now with mobile computing and you know, the age of, of, of smartphones and, and iPads, you know, that's maybe the, it's the mobile user, the, mm -hmm. the mobile applications, the mobile data, that maybe changes, maybe shifts the discussion from one of economics, which really don't hold up except in certain use cases for things mm -hmm. like VDI, maybe shifts that discussion from you know, TCO maybe to value, right? We never, when we first got PCs, we weren't saying, well, what's the economic justification oh, no, no. for PCs? I was like, I gotta have a PC, because it's gonna increase it's cool. productivity. Yes. And, uh, and so maybe you know, we'll see the same thing with, uh, with, I guess we should call it client virtualization. Yeah, you know? could call it, well, yeah, you know, I, I think, I, think uh, you know, I, I sort of got thrown off by the word desktop there. Yeah, client virtualization, or, device, or, or yeah. even application virtualization is really what it comes down to. Uh, and you know, accessing your data from that, that mobile device uh, and, and being able to, to manipulate it. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, there's, the, that is another area, a uh, big area of innovation these days is, is the uh, mobile arena and uh, you know, what the, the ultimate form factors of those devices are going to be and how they, they're going to use storage. That hasn't been decided yet. Uh, you're, you're starting to see you know, people, a lot of people around the conference are, are carrying iPads. Uh, and you know, so obviously there's, there's uh, a need for something that looks like a notebook uh, that's a touch screen. But you know the applications for that, and the, the really big data-centric applications for that. Well, they're they're starting to come online. How are those things going to connect to data? Is it going to be over the web? Uh, is it going to be something more direct? You know, there's there's uh, you know some interesting questions to be asked there. And, and how about um, another area? Uh, you got a great perspective, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> another area I'm interested in is is data protection. Um, I've been on record as saying backup is broken. Um, and I really think that the data protection as a service is the fix. And what I mean by that is if you think about backup, it's really a, an, an outdated model of expensive insurance. Sure. I got one size fits all, I do daily incrementals, weekly fulls, there it is, take it or leave it. And, and I'd like, as a business person, to have more granularity in, in the backup choices that I have. Yeah, I'd like to pay more for my mission critical applications and not pay as much for mm -hmm. less mission critical is, is that something that, and, and of course everything's moving to disk base, which brings us mm -hmm. to, sure. to, to, to you guys. Do you see uh, potential to play a role in that transformation along with virtualization and cloud computing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that, that is an area that we think is, uh, is very fertile for better solutions. And, and again, going back to uh, the, the previous discussion we had about how we changed the way, uh, you know, the, the workflows of storage, uh, or, or happening uh, by developing ecologic. You, you should, you, you, there's a very similar set of sometimes bizarre, arcane workflows in backup. Like, why do people do that that way? Uh, and, and, you know, it, it all kind of, it centers around habits and old systems and tape. Yeah. Uh, and even a lot if of process that's built up. Well, and, and if you think about it, right, even if you take away the tape and put in disks, uh, if the process is the same, have you really done anything you know, well, that, and that's, that's what Data Domain did, and that's they and they succeeded wildly doing that. And you remember, Data Domain, their whole the the, the tongue in cheek yes. motto was was tape sucks. Mm -hmm. Well, well turn out turns out that backup sucks. It, that's really exactly. <laughs> you know, so there's an opportunity <laughs> exactly. there. I think you're right. I think it is fertile ground. Yes, and, and so th there are lots of things. You know, when we when we first built our uh, auto, uh, the auto snapshot manager uh, to do uh, VSS enabled snapshots of Exchange and SQL Server, uh, we had a very non-backup use case in mind. Uh, you know, wh whenever you're sitting there and typing away at your application, you do something really stupid and you break it and you wish it was five minutes ago. Uh, dial know, it back. Yeah, we wanted to be able to dial it back really quickly to five minutes ago and you can, you can be on your way. It was like a giant magic eraser. Uh, that was the, the use case. Uh, but as we developed it and showed it to customers, everyone kept asking us, well, wait a second, these snapshots, they they're backups, aren't they? I mean, can I throw away my backup software? And we've always been like, whoa, 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 no, wait well, a second. See, that's the thing, right? You can't, right? Yeah. And the reason is because backup is one thing and recovery is everything. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, well the, no, what was interesting about those snapshots is that we automated the recovery from them so it's right. quick and easy. So they saw this and they said, well, well, that's really what I want for my backup solution. Yeah. That should tell us something because that's the customer 
Yeah. It's not that the customer has an idea really that that uh, is is particularly you know incisive, but you know they they um, they're telling you their problem uh, in an odd way in that case, and and we've constantly been looking at that and saying, well, gee, is is there you know a set of, of tools that we can build around backup to make um, you know that whole process more intuitive and, and more useful. And, and you know, if you think about it, you know, there, there are all sorts of different models, but ultimately backup, it's not just getting back your data from five minutes ago, it's, it's also um, you know, two years ago. Uh, Even and, though you don't do that a lot, you, you, lot, you need the ability to do that, yes, just in case, yes, right? Exactly, and, and so, so if, we, if we sat down and we thought through a process of what backup should be, I bet you we'd find that we drew out a process that's completely radically different from uh, the way people are doing it today. All right, uh, Lazarus <laughs> Vecchiarides, am I saying that properly? Vecchiarides. Vecchiarides, yes. Lazarus Vecchiarides, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing with us all your knowledge, and okay. uh, it's great thank to you. have you. Yep, Good luck with everything. We'll hopefully have you back someday. Yes, I'd love to be back. All right, excellent.